Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another How to Tie Fishing Knot series. Today's knot is the loop knot, and it's the most basic knot you could possibly tie. It's the most widely used fishing knot in terms of crappie fishing uh, that people use. And today I'm going to be using a uh, little marbu jig setup. This is a Pico jig that I got a while back. I don't think I've ever used this exact color. It's a pink and chartreuse, uh, this exact color of theirs. But this knot, you could use it for uh, regular just jigs with plastics. Something like this guy. This is a quarter ounce, just basic lead head jig head with a uh, Charlie Brewer, my, my favorite, by far my favorite style bait right there, that paddle tail swim bait. This knot could be used for pretty much anything you really want to. I wouldn't recommend it for any type of search baits or baits that you're really ripping through the water column because what happens a lot of times, especially if you're using treble hooks, those hooks will get hooked into that loop and it causes a mess and you won't be able to catch the fish. So, it's a very simple knot. All you're going to do is you're going to put your tag in through the eyelet of the jig or the hook, whatever you're using. And I like to pull out about seven, eight inches of line. Now you're going to take your right hand or whatever dominant hand you have, you're going to pinch both the tag line and the main line together with that hand and you're going to pinch with your left hand and then with your left hand, your index finger and your left thumb, you're going to pinch the tag line and the main line together again. It's going to go like that. Then you're just going to take, you're going to leave about two, maybe three inches of drop and you're going to flip that jig over your pinched line. And I like to do it three, four, five times. Then you have a loop created in your right hand. You're going to take that hook or that jig and you put it all the way through that loop you just created. Now the trick is, People ask me all the time, how do I get a longer loop? All you have to do, instead of leaving, let's say, two inches like that, you can leave four inches. That's going to create a longer loop. Here's what's going to happen. As I flip this over, see how much is still hanging down? That is going to be basically how big my loop is. If I put this now through the loop I created with my right hand, put it all the way through, and you're going to grab the tag end of your line and the main line. You're going to pull the jig apart. Now you don't want it bunched up, so you might have to pull the tag end or the main line to make sure that knot doesn't get bunched up. You're going to wet it a little bit. You can pull it tight. See, the knot kind of got bunched up on me a little bit. But notice how that's my entire loop knot instead of it being an inch or two inches, that's probably about three inches, two and a half inches above my jig. So that's a little trick for you when you're tying this knot. I got a little bunched up, I'm going to retie this one, but the way you can fish these is pretty much endless. You can cast these out, you can kind of just straight reel them, you can vertically jig these or you can kind of yo-yo them back to the boat, you can vertically jig these. The beauty of the loop knot is to create free movement for that jig to make it more lifelike, make it look like you have a, a minnow uh, or some sort of bait fish on your lure. And that's going to hopefully trigger a strike, whether you're fishing crappie, whether you're fishing bass, whatever you're fishing. This is by and large the most widely used knot in the crappie fishing world. I'm going to retie this, got bunched up a little bit. Now that you got your loop knot tied on, I'm actually set up over some brush piles right now. We're going to vertically jig some of these brush piles. It's midsummer. What happens right now is a lot of times the shad will move, move around. There's a lot of white bass in this lake. The white bass will try to feed on that shad, those big schools of shad, and the wounded shad will fall to the lake bottom, and those crappie will be suspended right underneath those schools and eat them up. So, because of that, and because of that, the crappie are going to be a little more nomadic. I'm set up on a bunch of different brush piles here. I think there's probably nine or ten brush piles around me. I've seen groups of shad move through all these different brush piles and I've seen a ton of crappie move through as well. Um, so let's see if we can drop this guy down and start catching some crappie. All right, here we go. So I got the Pico little marbu jig, hackle jig. It's a little bit of a hackle, I guess. It's more of a hackle jig. It's going to look like a bait fish. I like these marbu jigs. Make it look like bait fish kind of swimming through the water, a little dying bait fish action. So let's get this in front of some crappie and see if we can pull a few out of these brush piles. Now I didn't really talk about line, but this is definitely something you could use monofilament with. 
I've just been using braid a lot more often than probably normal. Oh, there's a bunch right below the boat. Right below the boat. What's up there? Right here. Oh, there he was. Dang it. Oh, he was running with it. I was just sit, letting it sit there. They're hitting it on that fall. Just gotta watch that line. There he is, got him that time. Oh, God dang, let go. I'm in 23 feet of water right now. And these crappie are anywhere between eight to 15 feet down. And all I'm gonna do is just slowly pop this and pull up and hopefully there's gonna be a fish on there. Just gonna pop it a little bit. There he is, I got him that time. Got you that time, buddy. Just that little popping action. Makes it look like a flailing bait fish and there are a ton of bait. These aren't very big guys, but look at this school. Look at that school of fish. My goodness. These are all, these are all crappie. There's thousands of them right there. Yeah, at least a thousand, maybe not a couple. I don't know, there's a ton of fish down there. And for those of you wondering, I'm using 10 pound braid right now. And these fish don't seem to mind it. I mean, they're hitting the lure. You can definitely use mono or some sort of smaller fluorocarbon. There he is, got him that time. They're all cookie cutter nine inch fish. Cookie cutters. Yeah, nine inches on the dot. There he is. Oh, come, there you. Oh shoot, I missed him. That's the other thing. Sometimes they'll hit that thump, and sometimes it's just dead weight. Depends on how they hit it. If they hit it on the fall. It'll just feel like dead weight when you lift up. There he is. That's a dink. Big school right below the boat. Giant school right below the boat. Look at all of them. My goodness. All right, let's see if we can catch one and then I'll finish talking. Loop knot is just one of those great knots overall for pretty much anything except for maybe some search baits that you're really gonna use treble hooks or kind of rip through the water column. They're right below the boat. They're like six feet down. I don't even know if I can see him. There he is, got him that time. Hey buddy. So as you can see, there are a ton of crappie down there and this loop knot combined with either you know, marbu jig, this is more of a hackle jig, I guess, but regular jigs with some plastics. It's just a great over and all, all knot to make your jigs look a little more lifelike in the water, give that little freedom to move. 
So that's going to wrap it up. The basic little loop knot setup. Make that jig, whatever you're using, if it's a hackle jig, marbu jig, uh, just a plain jig with the plastic. Make it look like a lively bait fish. That is the entire goal of the loop knot. Audio is probably crap, but uh, yeah, vertically jigging it, casting out. I mean, you could fish this a bunch of different ways. I was kind of doing a little bit of both. When the fish would come underneath the boat, I'd vertically jig it. I was casting out a couple different times. Uh, unfortunately, there's so many fish on this piece of water that trying to sort through these smaller ones to find the those 10, 10 and a half inch fish, it's, it's kind of hard. So uh, I recommend if you're gonna try to do that, you can upsize it to a bigger jig head. That's a 16th ounce Pico. Uh, jig that I was using 10 pound braid and uh, if you really want to purely vertically jig because I knew I was going to do a little bit of hybrid both vertically jigging and casting so I went with the seven and a half I also have eight foot rods tied on ACC crappie sticks if you're going to purely vertically jig you probably go the 10 11 or 12 foot vertical jig rods those ones I recommend for just vertically jigging brush piles you know you're not going to be casting just vertically jigging but if you're kind of unsure what you're going to do Go with the seven and a half foots or the eight footers. But uh, yeah, so that's how to tie a loop knot widely used across the crappie fishing industry. Try it out, see how you like it, and then let me know in the comment section if you like it or not. So do me a quick favor before you go, click that subscribe button, click that bell, and then follow me on Facebook and Instagram. If you got any questions and I don't get back to you in the comment section below, you can message me on Facebook or Instagram. I usually get back to you pretty quick on those. A lot, probably a lot quicker on Facebook or Instagram than in the comment section. So appreciate you watching. We'll see ya.